Before we shift gears to get into the message this morning, let's pray together. Lord, I am so thankful that we can be here today to celebrate fathers. Lord, even as our heart is hurting over the loss of our friend, let us find joy in knowing that you are a good, good father, even when tragedy strikes. Let your Holy Spirit comfort and strengthen us. Lord, I pray over those who will be speaking about fathers today. Lord, may they be graced with wisdom beyond their own and speak according to your spirit. In your holy name we pray, amen. Amen. So most years on Mother's Day and Father's Day, I like to give an opportunity for people to share what God has laid on their hearts, uh, not just about their own father, but about fathers in general, and above all, our Father God. Amen? And so this year is no different, and I am pleased to welcome them to speak today. And so for our first speaker, please put your hands together for Matt Borchers. Good morning. I'm going to have my two boys stand up for a second and turn around so you can see why I wore this shirt today. <clears throat> So I'm wearing my Father's Day gift. Um, it says, whatever happens, Marty, don't go to 2020. <laughs> um, so the, the backstory to that shirt, um, the Back to the Future trilogy is probably my favorite trilogy. I don't want to offend any Star Wars fans, but this is the greatest trilogy. So um, since now there's three parts of the Star Wars thing, I mean, there's, it's really not a trilogy anymore. So. Um, and I guess the other part of that is just, that's one of the many things that I do with my kids is watch some movies. And the good thing is they've decided to enjoy some of my movies like that and Jurassic Park, Jurassic World, all those movies. Um, and so I guess I decided then if they're willing to claim me and wear the same shirt as me, then I'll wear it too this morning. So it wasn't my original plan, but, um, so I'll try to stay on track here, Pastor. I have four pages, <clears throat> but it's it's not necessarily notes. I've when I was a kid in school and I would do a speech or something, I would just jot a couple notes down and then I would kind of wander all over the place. But as I've gotten older and I speak at school and stuff, I type exactly more what I want to say. So I'm a little more focused. So four pages hopefully won't take that long. <clears throat> Um, but I, I did a lot of thinking and praying about this the last couple weeks as, as pastor asked me to do this. I started a couple weeks ago, um, and I was working on it last night. Um, so what, what fatherhood means to me is directly connected to trying to understand how to be the man of God that he created me to be. Because then that's what I'm trying to teach these two, is to someday be godly men. Um, some memories that I think about when I think about being a father um, is watching these two grow up. I remember uh, the first time Zach walked um, right in front of our front door in Colorado. I remember him taking his first steps. I wasn't there when Caleb took his first steps because he was at daycare and he was always crawling and running faster than everybody. So I wasn't there when he took his first steps. I remember both of them learning how to ride bikes, um, teaching them that. Um, I've coached baseball and basketball for both of them and other things. Um, and then it's kind of gone full circle now. So now as I'm getting older, they're, they're challenging me to keep up with them. And a good example is on Friday, we were in Sioux City visiting my mom and stepdad. And there's a, a water park sand pit outside Lamar's that we went to. Well, two years ago, I fell there and tore my rotator cuff. <clears throat> So I was kind of hesitant to go back there, um, but they asked me to go back there, and I went back there. And So this time I was a lot more careful on the water slide where I tore my rotator cuff two years ago. But this time they challenged me to do a backflip off the 10-foot dive tower. So I didn't get injured, but I did a backflip off the 10-foot high dive. But So that's an example of, you know, now they're trying to drag me along to keep me young with mountain biking and wakeboarding and all these things. So... I've been teaching them things, and now they're trying to teach me things or, yeah, keep me young, right? You're not trying to kill me, right? <clears throat> Just trying to keep me young? Okay. Um, so back to what does fatherhood mean to me? Um, doing my best, never giving up, trying not to blame others, taking responsibility for my own actions. Those are all part of being a man of God and being a father. 
being okay with failing and allowing God to help me when I fail, teaching my kids to look up to God as the example, not just at me, Um, because I want to say, follow me as I follow Jesus. Unfortunately, you know, our kids see the best of us, but they also see the worst of us. Um, And so that's the example, not me. I remember being at a church youth convention rally when I was in college, and I went as a youth sponsor, and I I noticed a young person watching their youth pastor or sponsor or dad, whoever they came to that event with, and it struck me that they were watching and copying the example of them raising their hands during praise and worship. Then the young person started to raise their hands during praise time as well. So one of my goals as a father is that my kids know that I rely on God And in the end, that's whom they should rely on also. I know that I don't have to be up here up front as a worship leader or pastor, be an example for my kids or others. I just need to be real and honest. So I hope that they're seeing those things from me and the people that I also allow to be an authority over us, the godly people that I bring them to. In the Bible, it says that we as parents should be our child's first teacher In Proverbs 22, 6, it says it's our responsibility to train up a child in the way that they should go. And then when they are old, they will not depart from it. I know that's every parent's prayer. Um, As I think back to people that I grew up with in church, pretty much all of them, even that wandered away, have come back. And so that's definitely my prayer for my kids. Not that they wander away, but that as I train them up in the way that they should go, that they stay on the path. And if they do wander away at some point, that they know the path to come back to. In Proverbs 13, 24, it says, Good dads discipline their children. The one who loves their children is careful to discipline them. This is also about proactive leadership in our homes and being a godly example. My kids would probably tell you sometimes I'm grumpy. It's, it's not just because I'm hungry. Sometimes it's I know what I think they need to know to be godly young men someday um, and what the Bible says and trying to keep them on that path. Um, Dads never give up on our kids. Luke 15 talks about the prodigal son, the story of a father who never gave up hope and is ready to receive his child back with open arms. No matter what our kids do, if they wander away, we'll always welcome them back. We'll always give them another chance. Um, I know times my kids have been very frustrated with me, or I've been very frustrated with them. After we all calm down, I'll always give them another chance. Parents pray for their children. In First Chronicles 29, it says, King David prayed for his son Solomon. Children who, know without any, children who know without any doubt that their parents pray for them feel a deeper sense of love and security. I pray for my wife and my family almost every day. I want you guys to know that. Some words that come to mind in regards to fatherhood are protect, sacrifice, provide, forgive, listen, leadership, and be patient. Protection changes as they get older from being infants to being teenagers. The obvious things, protecting from all danger like a hot stove or a busy highway, and the unseen dangers like the internet. Kids are like cats. They are curious, and they often don't know when they're in trouble until it's too late. So we need to educate them about possible problems and hope that they won't make all of the same mistakes that we did. When we go on a trip, I always tell my wife that it's her job to make sure that we eat and have fun, and it's my job to protect and make sure that we all get there and back safely. Sacrifice and provide. I remember holding my boys when they were little and knowing that life had changed. I would have to grow up and sacrifice and provide for them and my family. I understand more things about my own father, too, after having children and the challenges that he faced. Sometimes we just do the best we can. I do have a lot of good memories of my dad, too, though. I got to see him a couple days ago. Um... But there was a lot of challenges growing up. My parents are divorced. They got divorced when I was 14. There was verbal and physical abuse in our house when we were growing up. And so sometimes I said, you know, I learned what not to do. But I have a lot of good memories with my dad, too, and learned a lot of good things, too. He's a very hard worker. Um, 
he took pretty good care of our family. He made sure we went to church. We must teach our kids and also let them go and trust God to care for them too because they do have free will. Um, other words that come to mind are apologize. Ask for forgiveness and forgive them. It's not always easy, but it's very important. That's probably the hardest thing as a parent is to apologize to our kids, ask for forgiveness. I try to role model that. Some days I do better than others. Listen and be present. Put away distractions and let them know that they are important. Otherwise, they will follow the example of technology and other things being more important than relationships. That's probably one of the biggest things in school that I see. I'm a school counselor. Um, technology is such a huge distraction. And it's become such a false thing of relationships that if there's one thing we can teach our kids to value people more than technology and the junk of this world, it's not the same. It's not going to last. Be patient, which is easier some days more than on other days. Let them know what's expected and where the boundaries are. Allow them to be kids and to learn from failure. I'm working on that. <laughs> Lead instead of push from behind. Realize that they have choices too. Inspire and encourage them to want to make the right choices. Sometimes we have to allow them to fail. I have an easier time doing that at school with other people's kids, allowing other people's kids to fail and learn from that. Um, but I know with my own kids too, I got to give them space. I got to give them a chance to learn from their own mistakes. Um, some of you probably heard this story of an example of a parent in a parking lot. And we have two options if we're walking to the store. You know, we can drag our kids, come with me, you got to come this way. I don't want you to get hit by a car. But if they're old enough, it might be better to walk ahead and walk fast and challenge them to keep up instead of dragging them or instead of pushing them. You know, if you're teaching them the right things to do and the right things to look out for, then they'll keep up. And it'll teach them to be more responsible adults and prepare them better for the future too. But you got to be aware of the example you are setting. Um, but that little story goes back to part of what I said at the beginning too. Things have changed now when I'm riding mountain bikes with my kids. Now my son is always the one up front challenging me to keep up because he's faster probably on a mountain bike now than I am. Um, I shared a little bit about with my dad that my, my parents got divorced when I was 14. Um, as I was driving this morning, I thought about something I needed to add to this pastor. So I did write on here. Um, as I'm preparing my lessons at school, I teach a lot about character education and how to be a good person, how to be a good adult, young adult, all those types of things. But a lot of it's based on feelings and how I think and how the world wants us to be successful. The nice thing is, as I'm talking today, it's not just based on feelings. It's based on truth. It's based on God's character. It's based on his actions. I like that song that we sang that that's who he is. He is our Father. And so I, w I was thinking about words in the Bible that describe God, the ultimate Father, a few names of God that we should want to be like. Wonderful Counselor, Good Shepherd, Lion of Judah, He fights for us. And Abba Father, Daddy. I pray that God will help me to be more like Him as a Father in these ways. In Genesis, it says that He's Jehovah Jireh, the Lord will provide. When Isaac asked Abraham where the lamb was for the sacrifice, Abraham replied that the Lord would provide. After God provided the ram for the sacrifice, Abraham named that place on Mount Moriah Jehovah Jireh, meaning the Lord will provide. So we're to provide for our families too. God has provided for me and my family many times when I didn't know where the provision would come from. God's provision has increased my faith. I don't always trust people. But I want my kids to know that I trust God, and they can trust God. He alone can bring peace to challenging situations and increase our faith. Jehovah Ra occurs in Psalms. Ra is also used in reference to God. Ra means to shepherd or feed, to supply with food and be a good friend. Jehovah Ra means the Lord is my shepherd. 
God is a friend who provides extravagant nourishment, protection, as well as rest for our weary bodies and souls. I try to submit to God as my shepherd, and I try to be a good shepherd for my children as well. Another name of God, Abba Father, Daddy. In Galatians 4, it says that because we are his children, that he sent the spirit of his son into our hearts. The spirit who calls out, Abba Father. In Proverbs, it says, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous man runs into it and is safe. This makes me think of a small child running to their daddy, knowing that they will that he will protect them and keep them safe. I think of this example when I think of the protection that God wants me to be for my children. Even though as they get older, they might not think that they need me much anymore. (laughs) But I think of times when I don't know what to do, that I run to God, and I come to church, and I listen. So I want to finish with a poem or a letter that a friend of mine posted on Facebook a couple years ago for Father's Day. It says, an open letter to dads. When you don't feel like getting out of bed for work or for job hunting, do it anyway. When you don't feel like being honest and ethical at home or work, do it anyway. When doing what is right will cost you and bring you ridicule, do it anyway. When you don't feel like reading the Bible, praying and going to church, do it anyway. When you don't feel like being committed to your spouse or your marriage, do it anyway. When you have one of your children's events to attend and you are tired, do it anyway. When speaking into your child's life and giving words of affirmation feels awkward, do it anyway. When serving, mentoring, or caring for others seems to be inconvenient, do it anyway. When you have children that don't return or reciprocate the affection you give them, do it anyway. When being a person of your word becomes painful, do it anyway. When you know that you should apologize and ask for forgiveness, but it seems like a daunting task, do it anyway. I added that one. When following Jesus gets tough and it seems like you're simply putting one foot in front of the other, do it anyways. I love my kids and I'm proud of them both. I know that I'm not perfect, but I'm trying to be a father, a good father, and I pray that God will use me to help prepare these boys to be godly young men and good fathers someday as well. My challenge to them is to follow Jesus, and please forgive me when I fail to be the example that I want to be. Thank you. Matt, thank you so much, man. Um, there's a few things, a few things that reminded me, you know, uh, to be, to, to be a disciplinarian means you're being a good father. So Eli, expect to get it when we get home. (laughs) Oh man, this next speaker, um, was very nervous and, uh, uh, (laughs) is leaving right now. <laughs> uh, this last year has been, um, you know, uh, one of those kind of the last couple years, really, where um, Carol's dad had passed away. And, and you know, um, we talked about her her speaking for Mother's Day. And she, she said, you know, would it be okay if I spoke for Father's Day instead? And now I'm holding her to it. And she is a little nervous. So please uh, welcome Carol Hansen. <laughs> None of it makes sense. Oh my goodness. Okay. Oh. So good morning and happy Father's Day. Uh oh. Am I really loud? Okay. Oh. I'm sure you're wondering why I'm sharing today, because I'm not a father. I know this. Trust me. Um, The things I get myself into, I don't know. So yesterday or last night, whatever, I was talking to Doug. What are you going to say? How are you going to do this? He was sharing a few things, but didn't want to give me any of his secrets, because, of course, I wasn't ready. Um, So I told him, maybe we can do it together. And he says, no. Just do your own thing. You'll be fine. 
<laughs> anyway, did I write anything down? No. Did I? Do you have anything prepared? No, it was all in here. Not a good place to be if you're me. Anyway, so I get so nervous when I'm doing this stuff, and so please show me some grace today. <laughs> well, this is my second Father's Day without my dad, and he won't be the only one I'm talking about. Um, I got lots of good examples in my life for a dad, and my fear is to freak out like I'm doing <laughs> and not be able to do justice to the men that are so important to me. So here we go. So today um, we're celebrating Father's Day. <clears throat> and as I was thinking about this last night at midnight, um, I was on the internet because that's where all the answers are. No, <laughs> not. But I just happened to Google other names for father and I found 72 other terms. I won't use them all. Some of them are really normal, but I got a kick out of a couple of them. So there was dad, daddy, pa, pop, old boy, sire, padre, founder, just to name a few. But one that really jumped out at me was governor, because that's my dad's nickname. <laughs> Everybody called him the governor. Some people actually thought he was a governor. <laughs> he wasn't. <laughs> you could have been, maybe. Anyway, he was dad to me. And in my opinion, he was the best dad in the world. Again, that's in my opinion. Like I said, I had a lot of good dads. Um, sorry, what's my spot here? <sighs> so I think that everybody out here um, has somebody that's important to them, an important father figure. Um, it could be a brother, an uncle, a grandpa, maybe your father-in-law, maybe a good friend, or even your pastor. <laughs> Every one of them is important. And everyone needs a strong male influence in their life. Um, I found this really cool quote from Billy Graham, and it said, a good father is one of the most unsung, unpraised, unnoticed, and yet one of the most valuable assets in our society. Well, it turns out Billy's right again, and I couldn't agree more. So I want to share with you today some amazing men in my life, and it's all going to be in a nutshell, and I might go a little wild here and go rogue. I can't help it. <laughs> so my dad, the governor, Kenneth Reinhardt, um, he's the first man that I ever loved and the first man who loved me. And I came from a pretty big family. I'm number seven of eight kids, and we had a very busy household. So when he passed away last year, it was really hard because we didn't get to be with him. And my dad was used to having his whole family with him, and we ended up, he had to be in the nursing home for three and a half weeks, basically alone. He wasn't a man to talk on the phone or do um, FaceTime or any of that stuff, so it was really hard writing on a whiteboard, looking in a window, trying to explain to him what the virus was and why we couldn't come in. And it just made him put his head down in sadness, and it, it broke our heart. But still a lot of good memories, and I love him, and I miss him dearly. So I had all these things written down, and I thought, well, you dummy, why don't you just read the obituary? <laughs> which is kind of a sad thing, but a good thing, but I wrote it. <laughs> so I had the honor of writing his obituary, and I'm going to just read parts of it to you. Well, anyway, so I started off with, <clears throat> on May 2nd, 1929, God made a farmer. Kenneth Edward Reinhardt. He was born and raised on the farm to Edward and Elizabeth Lang Reinhardt, and he was the oldest of eight siblings, and let the work begin. Legend has it, in his attempt to boss his siblings, they called him the governor a name that would stick to this day. Known for his superhuman strength and stubbornness, there wasn't anything he couldn't do. Little did he know he had soon meet the match, and not on FarmersOnly.com, but the match of his life, the daughter of a Methodist minister, Doris Allison. She was the love of his life. They married on night, May 15, 1948, and had a herd of, their own herd of eight children. They set endless examples of hard work, perseverance, kindness, and most of all, love. They worked side by side, toe to toe, farming together, providing for their family in good times and in bad. With the dirt on his big calloused hands and the dirt on his face, his hat sitting cockeyed on his head, he worked tirelessly. Up before the sun, working long until after it set, his livelihood at the mercy of the weather, and always thankful for a gentle rain, or sad inside when the hail took the harvest of his dreams. He could test the moisture of a kernel of corn or a soybean by biting the kernel, making his decision which field to harvest first. 
Not only was he the best farmer, he wore many hats. He was an avid fisherman and a hunter, and with eagle eyes, he could spot any animal or bird not visible to the normal human, human, nothing escaping his view. Driving down every back road, rarely watching the road, and checking every nook and cranny looking for wildlife, never taking the same roads home, and always going a different way. He could track and retrieve better than any dog, and he never did have a dog for that. And he could walk miles at a time and loving the thrill of the hunt. He was a skilled carpenter too, and he built our family home and another home, not to mention all the projects he did for his kids and his family. Additions, remodeling, and tearing down, he was doing it. Clearing trees or dirt work, using a tractor and a loader, bulldozer or road grader, he could shape the land with precision by feel. Now we all know the seeds in the field weren't the only ones he was excited to watch grow. The same went for his children, grandchildren, great-great-grandchildren, and he enjoyed watching all the sporting events and even the dances. He was their biggest fan. And playing cards and games with grandchildren and friends for years, good luck trying to win against him. He was a card shark. The stories are endless, full of precious memories and generations of children who are loved beyond measure by a man who can never be replicated. He was a loving husband, a beloved dad, a grandpa, a brother, and a friend. He was the all-American farmer. Anyway, he was ready to go home, and he would always be reminiscing that Mama, that's what he called my mother, was tired of waiting for me. So on Monday, April 20th, 2020, he joined his wife, Doris, his daughters, Lucretia and Vicki Jo, a grandson, Jason, a granddaughter, Amanda, along with a great-grandson, and all the rest of his family. And then we had on there that, um, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I'll put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. Rest in peace, Governor. We love you, Dad. So I was honored to be able to write that. I didn't read it exactly, but it's close. In a nutshell, my dad was the man of my dreams, I guess. That's what you could say. But I also had other men. And another one was Alan, my father-in-law. Now, I was a little afraid of him at first. <laughs> and I'm sure he didn't want his son distracted from his work with me hanging around. But that's another story. I was so young, and they only lived a mile away. <laughs> right, Doug? Convenient. <laughs> but it all worked out, and he basically gained another kid. Before you knew it, I was working ground, hauling seed, pulling the head trailer for him, getting used to his slang and making sense of his drawings in the dirt with his pliers, which he did use for everything. Sometimes he could over-explain, trying to make sure you understood, but sometimes he confused me. <laughs> for example, drawing in the dirt, showing me which field to go into next. I'm like, I got this. I know where this is at. I can do this. <laughs> Only to find out, as he and Doreen were bringing me lunch, I was in the wrong field. I was in the neighbor's field. <laughs> he came down the ditch, and she was standing up with a big smile on his face, and the guy had a killer smile, so that was good. Just smiling away at me and telling me what a good job I was doing, but that's not our field. <laughs> I went home crying for a little while. <laughs> But to get back out there, um, I would think I helped teach him patience, along with Mike. <laughs> we could teach him a lot of patience. Um, one time I was going with a disc to the field south of their house, and I pulled in and feel all proud of myself getting in there, put the disc down, only to look back when I'm putting it down to see all the electrical lines hanging on the ground. <laughs> How do I know? I hooked him. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, there's lots of stories, but anyway, I, I, I loved him like a father, and he loved me, which was perfect. So we got along great, and I loved watching him be a grandpa. And when he found out we were having a baby, just like my dad, everyone was so excited, babies, sorry, so excited and couldn't wait, and we'd been waiting a long time, so rightfully so. So even when I was deliver, about to deliver and had to be, going to Sioux Falls, um, he dropped everything. Um, he wasn't going to miss out on this big event. And he went with us, and I remember him sitting in the wheelchair, rolling around in the, <laughs> the hallway, waiting. <laughs> Good thing he was calm, because I sure wasn't. Anyway, I just miss all those memories like that, or miss all those 
times and I, I cherish those memories, I guess. So he'd go with us to every single event that he could, um, traveling us with lots of games and um, different events the boys were in, proudly watching. And then all the times that they took them camping and for ice cream, our family pizza nights, so many great memories. And when we lost him, he left a huge hole. And because of this though, when he passed away, we started coming to here, to this church, CGA. And because of him, um, we accepted Jesus and we were saved officially. So thank you, Alan, for that huge gift. Um, a few other men that um, I want to share about are, I didn't really have a grandpa, so I took Doug's grandpas. <laughs> he shared and they shared back. Um, there was Grandpa Oscar and he was awesome. Always welcoming, a big smile, a hug. Just their home was, their door was always open and it was always welcome. Um, he was also excited about going and seeing the boys when they were born. We hauled him out there, <laughs> maybe against his will, I don't know, seemed he enjoyed it. And he sat in the NICU with us and held both Bryce and Evan. So I don't, I'll never forget that either. Those are really special memories. And when we found out we were pregnant, we went and told Oscar and Irma and his way to celebrate something was always to have a, a shot of Akavit. <laughs> Even offered me one. <laughs> I didn't drink it. <laughs> and Grandpa Rex, um, he wasn't long or around long after we were married, but I got to know him a little bit too. And um, he gave us his refrigerator <laughs> when we were first married. And he came over and helped us out and pulled in our yard lots of times in our little house down the road from Allen and Doreen's and um, always funny and had jokes and smile and I loved them both. I loved them both a lot. Um, so another guy that I want to touch on here while I'm up here is, not you Doug, not yet, <clears throat> is Mike. Um, Mike, you were so wild when you were young. <laughs> you were so stubborn and such a pain. <laughs> But I just had, I just knew when you were coming around, there was going to be excitement. And I love spending time with you. And I know I watched you grow up, and you've become such an awesome, awesome man. And I love you. I do. You're really special to me. And I love how you interact with my boys. And from the time they were little, you'd come in and spend time with them and holding them and playing with them on the floor and stopping by and just whatever. And then as they got older, Soon it was basketball games in the driveway, then it was football games, then it was pitching and baseball. You even helped us coach baseball. <laughs> you probably didn't even realize the positive impact you were having in building that great relationship with the boys. And I appreciate it more than you know. And now as you're working together on a weekly basis, sometimes daily, um, they think the world of you and I appreciate that. And so do I, and so does Doug. So thank you for being a great example and I'm, happy that you guys are so close. I really am. Um, but one thing that is always fun when Mike's around and Bryce and Evan and Doug is we always get lots of voice impressions or lots of quotes from movies or lots of, <laughs> it's always fun. It's crazy. But, and that's the main thing. We have fun and we enjoy being together. And another guy that's not here that I want to talk about is Bryce. Um, watching him become a dad for the first time and now a second time and so young, it's just feels really good as a mom, and I think it's really feels good as a dad to watch your son be such a good dad because he had such good role models in his life and good men to guide him and show him how to do it. And a little bit of mom, that's okay. Today's about dads. <clears throat> so now on to you, Doug. <laughs> We've been together for a long time, like. A really long time. Anyway, and marrying you was the best decision decision that I've ever made. I love you so much. You're such a great husband and such a really good dad. I couldn't ask for anybody else, anyone better. You're irreplaceable. So don't go dying on me. <laughs> That's a joke. <laughs> so anyway. <laughs> I remember when we brought the boys home or when, when we found out we were pregnant and how excited we all were and you were excited too, nervous. We just wanted to get through this and get them here and whatever. And then when they finally got here 
the trips we made to Sioux Falls and the time we spent. And then finally, we got to bring him home after three weeks, which really isn't that long, but we got to bring him home. So we're coming home from Sioux Falls on the interstate. I'm in the back seat in between them, watching, watching him breathe every breath, and Doug's driving 50. <laughs> <laughs> we're being passed by everybody. Now, if you've ever ridden with Doug before, he does not drive that way. He's taken me on when we were younger. We should, he, yeah. Has anybody ever climbed a ditch like to get your front wheels over the top of the, just to see if you could do it? <laughs> Not a smart move, but <laughs> we sure had fun. <laughs> Thank God we lived through it all. <laughs> oh. Anyway, so you were driving 50 mile an hour, bringing them home, and now they know how to drive a semi or any other piece of equipment on the farm, and they know how to feed cattle, they know how to take care of things, take care of the land, take care of the livestock. They can do it all. They really don't even need us anymore. <laughs> we've, we've done well and you've done well in showing them, being a good example, teach them to work hard and putting your love and your trust in them as you're letting them spread their wings. So thank you for being such a great dad. I could tell story after story, but I better shush. So anyway, and for you two taking on, after your dad passed away, when you took on that whole scenario of all that, that was a big wheel to roll. And you dug deep, you trusted God, and you let God in, which is the most important thing. And you were determined, and you sat down, and you looked, and you went through every single thing, you and your mom and Mike, and everyone went through all of that stuff to get it all figured out because your dad had a lot of complicated stuff going on. <laughs> and how we ever made heads or tails of that, I don't know. Only God knows. So thank God he was there to help us. So good job on being so um, dedicated to the Lord and letting him lead you and guide you through all that and figuring that out and being such a great example for our boys. And in your faith, you've shown us how man leads a family and how he prays over his family. And this part of our life has been the best part of our life and probably the easiest part, even though it's the hardest part, because you let God in and you've showed us what it is to trust God and to, to let God lead. And all you men out there that do all those things, good job. Thank you for doing all that. But I know your favorite part of your whole life right now is being a grandpa. <laughs> holding the girls as priority or chasing them, whichever it is. Everything stops when they're around, and why not? Because I know they're your greatest treasure. Mine too. We are so blessed to have them, and we're so blessed for all of these dads in this church, so blessed for all of these babies in this church, and um, blessed, most importantly, to have a God that loves us. So... All of these men have shaped me in my thoughts and my actions, and I hope to show the best of them to all of you. And I hope that I can encourage you with this last little part. <clears throat> and I do realize that some of you maybe have grown up without a dad due to various circumstances, possibly never having a, had a fatherly example. Um, and that's got to be really tough. But the good news is <clears throat> that we all have a Heavenly Father who loves us. We are all his children. No matter what we're going through, no matter where we've been, <clears throat> his love is unconditional, and it's so simple. In him, we have a comforter, a helper, a strengthener, and so much more. <clears throat> his name is the Holy Spirit, and because of him, we're never alone. Everybody here has a father that loves them, watches over them, takes care of them, and will always be there for you, no matter what. He's there for all of us. All we have to do is accept him and let him in. With that, happy Father's Day, and thank you for listening to me ramble. Carol. What? Come here, Carol. It's all right. See, uh, Carol, you did a good job. Oh, yeah. You did. You were, so, you were so nervous. What was that shot that you said your grandpa would take? Akavid. Akavid. I don't know what that is. What is it? It's like a fireball. You didn't take one before you came up here, right? No, okay. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> uh, 
you know, Carol touched on some things, and, and one of those things is, you know, we celebrate fathers today, but we don't just celebrate natural fathers. We celebrate spiritual fathers. And so there are people here who may not have children naturally, but they have children spiritually. And so we want to recognize that God moves and, and, and touches on people in so many different ways, and it's just a tremendous blessing. Barb, it's so good to see you. Hi. So uh, I don't mean to point you out, but it's okay. Uh, but man, it's, uh, you know what, God just, uh, man, it's such a blessing, not just as a natural father, but a spiritual father. And one of the, uh, what I would say would be one of the, um, you know, men of the church that uh, has shown himself to be not just a, a good natural father, but a good spiritual father is Doug Hansen. And he's going to be our next speaker. But before he is, he has a video that he wanted to share with you. So go ahead and play that. Doug, you want to shut the lights off? been so bossy? Always. Is he actually dangerous? Oh, chance. <laughs> you really are a lot, aren't you? Please welcome Doug Hansen. Good morning and happy Father's Day. And I'm supposed to follow Matt and Carol. Yeah, thanks a lot, Pastor. <laughs> she was all worried how she's going to do, and uh, she's going to be back there crying and blowing my nose for her. So, um, uh, I've seen this, I found it last night, and I just thought it was really kind of neat, because I remember growing up, uh, that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to be like my dad. And uh, so I told myself I wasn't going to get emotional here. So, um, <clears throat> you know, I followed him around everywhere. He didn't leave the yard unless I was in the pickup with him. Um, just, you know, that's the way it was. That's the way a lot of us are, you know, when you're young, dad is, is the best. He knows everything. And uh, then as you get a little older, you think you know everything, but uh, then you get older yet and you realize he did really know everything and at least tried to teach you. So, um, 
I just thought this was kind of neat, so I wanted to share it with you. But I was very blessed to have a, a great dad who taught me a lot. Not only about farming and life, but about, uh, you know, it took me quite a while to figure it out. It took him dying for me to figure it out that I needed to be saved. And uh, I just thank him for that because <clears throat> without him planting seeds into me and harping at me, like Carol said, he had a way of saying things three times. And uh, usually at the third time, you kind of like, yeah, Dad, I got it, you know. But uh, um, he w and I find myself doing that now. <laughs> the boys will say, Dad, we heard you the first time. But it's like, now I know why he did it. And uh, I try not to, yeah, I can kind of relate. But, uh, you know, sometimes you just, if you want to, if something's really important, you want to make sure that, and really all you got to do is just say, okay, all right, I got it. But, you know, we know a lot of times don't, I think. God does that with us too. It's like uh, well, He wants you to figure things out and, and let you figure it out yourself, which is which is wonderful. But uh, that's how much He loves us. But um, yeah, I had a really good dad. Um, taught me a lot of things. Alongside him working was uh, at that time Dad's hired man, and now he's just basically a part of our family. But Jerry Reinhardt. He's taught me a lot of things. I was there to help after Dad passed away and, and uh, taught me things that Dad hadn't taught me. And, and uh, I'm very blessed to have him as well. My grandpas and, and of course, Grandma. And uh, we're talking about Dads today, so Mom, I'm not leaving you out. But <laughs> uh, Anyway, I had great-grandfathers. Grand, um, both and both are just different in a lot of ways. Um, my grandpa Riggs didn't have a lot, but what he had, he he was satisfied. He he appreciated his life. He loved his life. He was he was in the service, and when he got out of that, he was a mechanic. And that man could fix anything with with duct tape, baling wire, you name it. He could he could make something that was a piece of junk run and run and run. We remember. He'd come by mom and dad's house and over there, and he had, he had this, his pickup had this sound of just kind of a clitter bang, 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 as it went on by, and you knew it was him, and, and it just kept, I don't know how it went to town every day. Every day he went to town just to get something. And, uh, yeah, he just was an amazing person as well and, and taught me a lot of things. Um, my grandpa, Oscar, taught me a lot of things. He also taught me how to uh, don't be nervous when you spend Three quarters of a million dollars on cattle because it'll work out some way. It'll work out, and and uh, yet Grandma was saving underwear bands and cottage cheese things. So uh, you know, <laughs> opposites attract, I guess. But uh, um, I had a lot of I had a as Carol spoke her dad, my father-in-law, great man, taught me many things as well. Um, um, taught me how to. Uh, I remember when we first got married. He said, you two need to get along because it's not moving back in. So <laughs> I learned to get along as we were rebuilding an old junk house and throwing the dead mice and raccoons out. And, and uh, he, he, yeah, he get along, he said, and uh, love each other. Uh, I had a whole bunch of really good uncles. They taught me a lot of things, some things I won't repeat. Um, they taught me what it's like to fly out of a little red wagon is tied to a motorcycle when I'm four years old. Um, they taught me that the word puking can be used as swear words. Um, they taught me how to run over grandma's chickens uh, with the motorcycles and how mad it made grandma and how we could bury them in the grove and she'd never know it. Um, many, many things, but, but uh, mostly just I watched them grow up and... Uh, just a step ahead of me, and it meant a lot to me. I could see every one of them turned into a, a good, responsible man and, and showed me that's what we needed to be also. Also needed to be a godly man. And uh, all of these men in my, taught me that. And uh, I think that's just huge to have God in your life and have him leading you every step of the way. I wrote this stuff down, but I'm not even looking at it. I don't know why I, I, don't know why I spent two hours writing this stuff down. But... Um, I think also um, 
a lot of people in my neighborhood, older friends, farmers, um, you know, just their examples of how they went about, how they got through things, um, how they treated each other. Um, I'd look at, uh, you know, when someone's down and out, having trouble, got a crop to bring in, here comes, you know, five, six combines and the whole fleet of trucks and it gets done. And uh, it just shows me how, you know, we need to help each other and be there for each other also. Um, I had a few bits of wisdom that my dad used to say once in a while. And I wrote them down, I will. He said, uh, if it's worth doing, it's worth doing right. Don't be lazy. That must have been one time I didn't do something right. Um, he said, if you're going to farm, wear a pliers or you'll spend half the day going to the shop, so get one. He also said, uh, he had this way of, it could, if mom brought him out a thermos of coffee, I was in trouble because that meant we were going most of the night. And he'd say, let's just make a couple more rounds. That meant at least two to three more hours. Um, my grandpa Oscar, I never quite knew what this one meant, but I finally kind of figured it out. He'd say, Douglas, keep your nose clean and your rows straight. I think it means stay out of trouble and do your best. But, uh, and uh, it's funny how these men make impressions on you. To this day, if I smell bacon and cigarettes mixed together, my grandpa rigs. It's just like I like transcend time and I'm there. It's just... I can remember waking up, he'd have two, a cigarette hanging out of his mouth and two in the ashtray frying bacon. And, uh, you know, things like that just, and that's why he only lived into his 60s, but, you know, he, he enjoyed himself. He enjoyed himself. Much like our friend Mike Schubert, speaking of bacon, i never seen anybody eat 22 pieces of bacon my whole life. But I sat beside him at the men's breakfast and witnessed it, and he wanted to know why there wasn't any more. So... We'll miss you, Mike, and uh, yeah. <clears throat> so a couple weeks ago at the men's ministry, pastor asked one word it means to be a man. So we kind of all said, said a little something different. Um, those words were provider, leader, protector, honest, trustworthy, understanding, and problem solver, plus quite a few more. Um, I think these, many of these things are the same as what it is to be a father, um, except add love into it, um, unconditional love. And uh, much as the way our Heavenly Father loves us, he gives us the perfect example and roadmap to uh, how to be a father. And uh, that's discipline, but discipline with love and, and uh, forgive, guide, all the different things that we just said. He is our protector. He is our provider. He's trustworthy. He's very understanding. And he is our problem solver. So, you know, he gives us a pretty good... All we have to do is uh, give it to him and, and pray. Um, I think all of the world sucks it right out of us and our families. It takes a lot out of us just to continue to keep doing those things. And the only way to refill us up is to, to pray and let God pour into our lives and, and into our loved ones and, and help us to have the patience because uh, I think that should be a father's middle name is uh, patience because it takes a lot of them. But, uh, you know, I am very proud of my two boys. Um, Carol, Carol took all my good keynotes. I don't have nothing to even go off of. I, it's just the one after another. She was taking them all here. But uh, I'm very proud of them and I'm very blessed to... Uh, be able to work with him each day. Very proud of my brother, Mike. Very blessed to have him being in and around and, and uh, be able to work with him. And, and uh, you know, yeah, we have we have a lot of fun. He takes a month off in the fall, and uh, between him and Bryce, it's uh, it's Comedy Central. So it's half the time you walk away, I don't think anybody even heard anything I said or any plans. Everybody's just laughing. And, and uh, yeah, but it all seems to get done. So, uh <clears throat> I wanted to say a couple things for young dads, being as I'm an old dad now. Not, well, I'm a granddad, yeah. So, um, Looking back, it just seems like, you know, we worry and fret about all the little things we worry about if our kid starts screaming in church. We worry about, 
the different things and uh, you know, don't worry about that little stuff. You don't remember it anyway. Don't worry about winning the baseball championship little league game because the umpire didn't call a strike a strike or an out and out. You don't remember it anyway. Don't even worry about the high school stuff. Oh, one year later, nobody even cares. Um, don't worry that the coach didn't play your kid. It's not a big deal. As long as your kid's having fun, as long as you're having fun, and that ain't all. Remember, your kid's watching you if you do get upset at whatever's going on because he's, uh, how did dad handle this? How did mom handle this? It's huge. That's, I know, how I was over and over and over. How did dad handle this? How did mom handle this? Well, that must be how I'm supposed to do it. Well, if you handle it by praying and asking God to guide you each day, more than likely you're going to get it halfway right. So um, don't worry about the little things. Nobody remembers them. You won't remember them either. Just uh, mostly enjoy your time because it goes away fast. I loved watching my boys grow up, but it, uh, it goes fast. And uh, you don't think so some nights at 2, 3 in the morning when the kid's throwing up and, and uh, you got issues and whatever it might be. But uh, it all works out. It all works out just fine. And, and uh, you know, God's teaching you things. He's teaching you lessons on how you should act. He's, you know, he's testing you. And uh, just try to do the best you can each day. And, and uh, said, so don't, don't fret the little things. And lastly, I'm just going to leave, I guess, the last words my dad said to me was, uh, follow your Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, it's been good words to live by. So that's what I'll keep trying to do, and I encourage all of you to do the same. So thank you. Thank you, Joe. How many know, as a father or as a, as a, as a parent, it's not always uh, easy to set the godly example all the time? Uh, I was at my son's baseball game a couple weeks ago, and the umpire was blind. <laughs> and I remember I, was, I, I always kind of sit behind the dugout in the uh, bleachers there and I think maybe he called, he, he said, said Eli had a strike. And I think I audibly said, what are you, blind? <laughs> People kind of looked at me. <laughs> Whoo, praise Lord, amen. They said, what church, what church does he pastor again? I said, it's Grandview, don't worry about it. So... <laughs> Oh, man. If you would this morning, please stand with us. First of all, give a hand to all of our speakers. Before you leave this morning, I would like to, you know, uh, I was going to uh, just uh, like, this has been kind of a whirlwind of the last few weeks here. And uh, I was thinking like just this last week, I thought, uh, man, you know, normally we do a gift for mothers, and then, and then on Father's Day we kind of do a little trinket or a gift for fathers. And I thought, normally what we get for fathers, we just, <laughs> I don't mean we just throw it away, but it's kind of like just one of those trinkets where you go, oh, okay, that's nice. You know, it is what it is. Uh, so I thought, well, we'll give a gift to mothers every year for sure because it's usually like chocolate-covered strawberries or or food, or something like that. That's always good. Uh, we, maybe next year for Father's Day, we'll do beef jerky or something like that. That'd be good. Uh, but there's no little trinket this year, but I have a blessing for the fathers, if that's okay. If you would, let's pray today. Lord, this morning, we pray over our fathers. Lord, may they be examples of your love and mercy to their families. May they be examples of what it means to be a godly husband to their wives. Lord, I pray that in all they do, that it would be to bring you glory. So today, Lord, we bless them. We encourage them. We call them to righteousness and pray that they will be a light in their homes, pointing towards you always. For all of us here today, Lord, I pray that you would bless us. Lord, I pray that you would keep us. Lord, that you would cause your face to shine down upon us. 
And Lord, that you would give us rest. We thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I would uh, remind you there are some events coming up this week, including the memorial um, service for Mike Schubert on Saturday. So if you could be here for that, uh, we love you. Please be here. And uh,